Uh, hello. I'm just gonna read the parable of the Good Samaritan, and then after read the parable, I'm gonna give you some um, some uh, some examples of my experience in this life of um, of how humanity treat each other and um, just the lack of of Christ in this world. Um, but first, I'm just gonna read the Good Samaritan of uh, Luke. Um, 10, 30 to 37. And Jesus answered, uh, and, soon, and Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance came down a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And lack and likewise a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him, and went to him and bound up his wounds, poured an oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pence. And gave them to the horse, and said unto him, Take care of him, and wherever thou spentest more, when I come back, I will repay thee. Which now of these three thinkest thou was neighbour unto him that fell among the thieves? And he said, He that showed mercy on him. Then said Jesus unto him, Go and do, and do thou likewise. If you look at humanity now, and this is my own experience with my own loved ones, they will often walk past someone who, even with their own family that would be in need, and they walk past them. There are 300 and, well, 389 million people on the planet that are struggling with, and with no income and no support whatsoever. And the part that Jesus was mentioning the thing where you have someone who was attacked and robbed and who was at their lowest. And majority of people would simply walk past the person. And I've seen it myself when I saw someone who was either completely drunk or looked like he was dead and many people walked past. Some people stopped and rang uh, for assistance. But I've known in my life people who needed support and first came, came the priest and as is mentioned to just walk past the person then came a Levite, which would be someone of your own clan, and that person walked. But the Samaritan, who was someone who was an enemy of the person, is the one that showed compassion of our tree. Many people, they don't even look after their own family members that when they need them. We live in a world where people are so self-absorbed and selfish that they only the resources that the Lord gives them, they spend on themselves. And when they see someone in trouble, they don't want to help them as it either be an inconvenience for them or out of fear that, you know, they, not to trust them. Or they just have this mindset of, like, you know, someone else will look after it, after the person. But you have to ask yourself this question, if it was you, if you were needing help, wouldn't you not want someone to show you mercy and compassion? I often pray to the Lord for many people who are comfort in their existence, that the Lord provided for them, for the Lord to take it away from them. So maybe then they have some self-reflection and empathy for those that are in need. Because most people, this all they need is just like a helping hand. It could be something simple as using your resources to give them food or a gospel track. Or just to even just 
show a bit of humanity and decency towards them. But many people point their fingers at other people and call them criminals and call them and, and call them criminals and but they don't realize that they themselves in God's eyes we are our criminals, we're all our sinners. So this sense of pride is something that I pray for people to repent of because on day of judgment when you had an opportunity to help someone and you just didn't want because you didn't want to be as convenient to what you're doing then and the question is that what was more important with your time helping someone or watching television helping someone or, or entertaining yourself helping someone or, or, or playing video games helping yourself or going to a disco or dance helping someone or, 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 or going to a concert helping someone or just helping yourself there's too many narcissistic selfish people but as it says in in the living word of God, in the last days, people be lovers of themselves, and the heart will go cold, and a lot of family, natural family of uh, affection will be gone cold. And I had that from my own experience. Um, you have people who don't have a gappy love, and how would you expect them to have a gappy love if they don't have Christ in them? They can't love unconditionally. Like so, like many. Many people see someone in trouble and um, so people who have a conscience will help. Inside we have a written conscience. But you have people that they won't even, as I mentioned before, they won't even help their sons and daughters or, or, or those around them. Or, or the mother and father or, or, or those within the family circle, my uncles, aunts, and cousins. And, and a lot of them just spend their time just glued to TV. It's just to, to consume by this world. Just wake up, go to walk. Probably wake up, get ready, go to the toilet, go to walk. Then walk exhausts you. Then you go home. You just binge watch TV for three hours. Eat, go to bed, wake up, repeat the same cycle. You get you gain all the resources. You walk 30 to 40 hours a week. Um, you spent because you can't with the amount of income you generate you be you won't be able to buy a house or most people are living with their with their parents or their families or uh, renting temporary accommodation maybe for a year or two year lengths and at least and then when people do have families this to just just when it comes on Christmas time they just just completely bribe the kids with affection by just giving them a load of ties and at the same time lie to their kids but yeah it's I, I only pray that people when they see people that are struggling just to give them a hand and it's, you don't it's very wise that to disown when not so when someone if you want to help someone, the best thing you can do for them is just pray for them. Give them a gospel track. Because like, you could try and fix their lives, but unless they have the Holy Spirit in them, they're just going to end up repeating the same cycle again and get caught up with the same cycle and just end up back where they started. And then there's two type of people who are consumed by this world. There are those that have a comfortable existence, so they live in their own bubble. So people that are struggling outside them, they don't, they don't, they don't care because they're inside their bubble. So the 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 world with all things around the world around them, they have no concern about. Then you're those that are in survival mode, who um they're grasping grasping for for help, but. And they get evolved in a very destructive cycle then because of it, because they're, they're, they're grasping for survival. And therefore their attachment to cut the therefore their attachment to the world is on survival. So you have those that have attachment to comfort and those that have attachment to survival. Now you could end up helping those with, with survival, but if they end up going back into comfort again and that's the problem because me and them they are, their existence when they brought into the world was nothing but survival therefore they never known comfort so when they get comfort then they become greedy or, or they, they, they take it for granted so it's very important that 
you just prioritize the essential step when you when someone does get back up on the feet they just no longer go back into the same cycle again and my thing for many people is just turn to Christ if you're someone who's struggling with rock bottom um, Christ will help you deal with that suffering help with the suffering because the truth is that you cannot avoid suffering if someone tells you that you can live existence without suffering they're lying to you because it's impossible because we are suffering one way or form where you're either in denial of suffering or you become consumed by the suffering it's it's and you develop a victim mentality or or you um or you live in such comfort that you just uh, that so that you're suffering and you don't see it and um, so yeah, many people who live in comfort that the Lord blesses them uh, tend to be extremely self-absorbed and don't give to, don't care about anyone but themselves or whoever is comfortable with keeping their comfort existence. Anything that risks that, they, they don't, they're don't. they not willing to. That's why I often pray for those that are comfort for them to lose everything, that blessings for the, for the Lord to remove all the blessings that he gives them. And maybe then they might uh, be able to repent when they lose everything. Because like, your health is something that the Lord gives you. If you're very good health, and that's a blessing because not everyone has good health. So people take a lot of things for granted. And only when they lose everything, maybe then it will cause them a self-reflection of gratitude. Thanks so much for watching this video.